Ricky Bell continued the glorious tradition of the USC tailback, a position like center field for the Yankees that is held in reverence. Number 42 surpassed the achievements of Mike Garrett, Anthony Davis, and even O.J. Simpson. Along the way, he stood taller, played harder, and became the mightiest Trojan of them all. running backs perhaps in college football two for SC here's Ricky Bell third and eight Bell marker down so Ricky Bell the number one rusher Ricky Bell The Trojans have it. There he goes. The 11th touchdown for the nation's number one rusher, Ricky Bell. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select as the first selection in the first round, Ricky Bell, fullback, University of Southern California. The Buccaneers had lost all 14 games in their expansion season in 76, and Coach John McKay had brought so many of his former Southern Cal players in here, and the Tampa became known as Southern Cal East. When they had the opportunity to draft Tony Dorsett out of Pittsburgh and instead took Ricky Bell, a Southern Cal player, Ricky was off to a bad start as in strike number one. Ricky's first two seasons were disasters. Not only did he fail to elevate the lowly box, he was deemed personally responsible for their failure. It was hard for him to understand why people were so down on him. Ricky Bell, the tailback. And Ricky Bell gets the chance again. He didn't carry it, he wasn't involved. And here's Ricky Bell. Back to Ricky Bell. No way. Listen to the move. Jeb Blunt. The quarterback gives back to Bell, and he won't make it. Brad Van Pelt made the tackle, and the Buccaneers do not get in. And Ricky Bell is on the ground. It looks like he might be hurt. It was an eye formation pitch on first down most of the time. The pros can just, um, they react to that so quickly. We couldn't block anybody. We didn't threaten anybody down the field. Get out there, you idiot! Oh, horse, horse. No gut. Guts, that's what's wrong with us. John McKay, hoping that today is the day to get off the schneid. This will be 22 consecutive losses overall. We were unaggressive, we did not hustle, and we were uninspired. They're over 22, and these kind of shirts are out. It says, go for zero, and it shows the Buccaneer boat sinking, you know? The Titanic and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Titanic and the Tampa Bay <laughs> Buccaneers. Name two disasters that were accompanied by band music. <laughs> Green back to punt. That goes over his head. Green goes back. 
I take it back. Uh, they may not win the game this year at all. Here's Isaac Haggins, wide open. It's a foot race now. Haggins inside the 30. He fumbles the ball. Hoping to break. The 24 game losing streak today. Tampa Bay is having a long couple of years, aren't they? You can't stop a pass or a run. Otherwise, we're in great shape. So a hell of a lot of careers going in Monday. Fans gathered behind the bench and began to berate Ricky Bell personally. He took it as long as he could stand it, and he headed towards the stands. Several pay players had to restrain him. Buried by his critics in a shallow grave, Ricky Bell resurrected his career in 1979 and led the Buccaneers to a title. just something about his countenance that made everybody think he was special. He treated everybody special, and yet he'd walk on a football field and become a, an extremely violent, uh, aggressive runner. He'd knock you down and run over you and then come back and help you up. He ran so hard that he grunted when he ran. Huh, huh, huh. If you were deaf, you could hear him coming. Bell finally demonstrated why he was chosen first in the 1977 draft. He carried defenders almost 1,300 yards, lifted the Bucks to the NFC Central Championship, and to the brink of the Super Bowl in 1979.
Williams. Swing it to Ricky Bell for a touchdown! used to implement the strategy, pull back Ricky Bell, powerless to stop the man wearing orange number 42, who before the day ended would set a new playoff record with 38 carries for 142 yards. would finish the day with a playoff record 38 carries.
But a storybook that began with a honeymoon with Buck fans on the field and a marriage often concluded with a horrifying final chapter. The next year we, um, we were not anyways near as good, but he couldn't play very often. He would get an injury and where he might be out a day or two, he'd be out two or three weeks. I didn't know the reason why. The trainer and the doctor didn't know the reason why. I summed it up and says, Ricky Bell would like to be on the West Coast. I'm going to put him there. Traded to the Chargers in 1982, Bell, number 42, played little. Always sick or injured, it was discovered he had contracted a rare skin and muscle disease called dermatomyositis. Probably 90% of people have a normal lifespan with this disease. Ricky's condition caused inflammation of the muscles of the heart, which occurs in probably less than 5% of cases, and this was distinctly unusual. He had a certain sense of peace with it, that he was struggling with it, he knew that we could only do so much, and he really never let this on to people around him. He was a positive, energetic soul. On November 28, 1984, the mightiest Trojan lost the one fight he never had a chance to win. You know, he was a genuinely good person. You know, nobody, nobody ever had nothing bad to say about Ricky. Just a great person. And you know, it's easy to sit back when somebody's passed away and talk about how great he was, but I thought this at the time about Ricky. Probably the kindest, gentlest football player that I've ever been around. I think he had a, a sense about him that just made everybody love him. I, I loved him and I thought he was a great player. Knew how to do everything right. Uh, I wish there were a lot more Rickies. He's gone, but his memory lives on and it's strong. When things get bad, I just look at how bad things were him right before he died. He never complained. You know, he was uh, he was the kind of guy just I don't know. He was he was a once in a lifetime person. He was one in a million. You know, he was a one in a million guy.